Yes, yes. This is Monday morning, brand new week starting out. Had some great things happen this weekend. Hope that all of you had a great weekend. And uh, I, as a matter of fact, I spoke this weekend at the Unity Church here in Wilmington. And uh, great people, great, great, um, great environment. And so as we start off this week, a thing, that, a, a topic that has come up. Once again, as we are moving to close out this year. And I like to think of it as the concept of completion. Now, we know that what we're doing, we're, our talks are based on the 12 Universal Laws of Success. And our book is available on Amazon, all of the websites, and on our own website, www.herbertharris.com. And one of the things that we were looking at this weekend as we were talking in our discussion, our discussion was um, what's stopping you? In other words, what's stopping you from achieving your goals? And as we had discussions after my talk, one of the things that comes really very present is your ability to complete particular tasks. I had a partner once, Tiamo Raoult. We traveled all over the continent. We were in Africa. We were all around the world together at different points. And the one thing he often talked about, he would often say, did you complete yourself? And what that meant was whatever task you had to do, did you complete it? And when we really apply that, that, that concept to our daily lives, the way to create the success that we desire is to complete yourself each and every day. In fact, complete yourself each and every hour of each and every day. So what do I mean? That so often we'll start a task and we experience a little resistance, an obstacle, a challenge. And that obstacle or challenge causes us to lose focus. And so instead of focusing on the outcome we're seeking, we start looking at the problem. It's like you're on a boat and the alligators are attacking the boat. And you spend so much time fighting the alligators that you do not drain the swamp. Welcome, Sade. Thanks for joining us. What you say, Bay Bay from Mississippi, Quentin from uh, Atlanta, J Step, thanks for joining us. So, how do you complete yourself? How do you set yourself up so that whatever you start to do, you get it done? If you notice that if you don't complete yourself, it, it drops by the wayside. You know, you start a project. You know, many people say, oh, I want to write a book. Great. You have something to say, yes, I'm going to tell my life story. Great, do it. And you look up a month later, how many pages have you written? One. Three months later, how many pages have you written? One. The same one. So what happens? If you do not complete yourself on a day-to-day -day aspect, then as you get to the end of the week, you'll find that the things that you said you wanted to do are undone. And one of the interesting things about it is once it passes that week, no matter how great an idea it was, no matter, no matter how important it seemed to get it done, it drops off your radar. One of the great virtues of having a list of things to do is that at least if you have a, a list of the things you were supposed to do today, whether you did them all or not, but if your commitment is to at least make a list of the things to be done, then when you get to the end of the week or to the end of the month, you at least have a record to go back and go like, wow. Over this last week, I had 26 things that I wanted to get done. And I only got five done. But at least now you know. You see, if you did not make a list, the human mind, <laughs> you know, our minds are always so much dealing with the present and the presence that we don't really 
process historical performance very, very well. So if you're only dealing with the presence, you won't even, it won't even be in your mind that you failed to accomplish your goals last Monday. It won't even be in your mind what you did not accomplish last month. And that is why when we get to the end of the year, so many of us are disappointed because like, man, wow, all the stuff I said I wanted to do, I did not get done. So how do you complete yourself? What are some of the things that you can do so that whatever the task, whatever the project you have, you can complete the project? Well, number one is to look at everything as a project. The beauty of seeing it as a project is that you can see a beginning and an ending. It's much easier to schedule, operative words, schedule the activities that must be done to complete the project. And one very, very, well, a couple of very, very important things. Number one, when you start your list of activities necessary to complete that project, allow for preparation time. One of the ways that procrastination really undermines your performance is you, by procrastinating, you don't allow sufficient preparation time so that now when it's time to act, you're literally going off half cocked. So you end up always doing the best you can with what you have to do it with, but what you have to do it with is not really sufficient to get the best results. So. Make that list, but be aware of the schedule, the activity to be performed. Schedule the amount of preparation time you need to put yourself in the position to do the activity at the highest level. And be aware of how long the actual activity takes. And so when you operate like that, then you may look at a day where you have a list of things to do. You may say, well, there are 10 things I want to accomplish today. But when you go to the next level of awareness and say, now, this particular task, I'm going to need uh, two hours of preparation to be able to go and be intelligent about this class or, or this encounter. So now let me add those two hours. The, 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 the class itself is going to take an hour and a half. And so right now we see that we have two hours of preparation, an hour and a half of execution. So we're looking at three and a half hours. So if you're laying out your day and you put five things that each take three and a half hours to do because you did not consider the preparation time and the execution time, you're going to be disappointed. When we look at the things we have to do each day, the one, the thing that we often give up is preparation time. In other words, so often our activities are time bound. So you have a meeting, a discussion meeting. You got to be there at 10 a.m. To really be effective in that discussion, you should put in two hours of preparation. You should read your stuff over. You should make the notes. What, what are your expectations for that meeting? What are the outcomes that you desire for that meeting? When you skip the preparation time or when you undervalue the preparation time, welcome Lundy and Aubrey, thanks for joining us today. When you undervalue the preparation time, you'll go to the meeting, but you'll be going, wow, this is very interesting. Wow. Have you all been able to hear me? <laughs> I don't believe this. I forgot to put my earphones on. <laughs> okay. So, uh, man, I, I really feel badly about this. Let me do a quick recap. We're talking about completion, your ability. <laughs> okay, Sade. Yeah, thank you. Now can you hear me? All right. Very interesting. My earpiece is in. My earphones are in. Yes, now loud and clear. Thank you so much. Wow. Folks, if I'm ever talking and you can't hear me, write something, say something, because, you know, let's talk about this. This is an excellent 
example of the lesson. <laughs> In other words, preparation. Normally, I am very prepared for my morning talks. Everything is in place. The camera's in place. The phone is in place. The earphones are in place. But think about this. <laughs> yeah, Q-Man says, yeah, you didn't prepare, Doc. You got that right. So yesterday when I spoke at the church, I had to break my stuff down to take my cameras and stuff to film everything. And yesterday was a busy day. I had two interviews and each one was like 90 minutes. Then my grandkids popped up unexpectedly. So lo and behold, the stuff that I normally do to prepare for Monday, I did not get done. And this morning when I came into the studio, I really came with the expectation that it's a normal Monday, but I had not made the prep, proper preparation. And look what happened. Wow. I don't know if there's a Latin term, Dr. Monroe, demonstratum adoratum. It sounds good, and, I, and I'll, I'll define it. I've never heard of it, but demonstratum adoratum. In other words, that the very lesson that you're trying to teach, you're demonstrating the actual lesson itself. Mm -mm -mm. So let, let me do a quick recap. I was talking about one of my good friends and teachers and mentors, Tiamo Raup, and his favorite statement was, did you complete yourself? And what he meant by that was, did you complete the task that you set out to do? And I was saying that when you don't complete the task that you set out to do, at the end of the day, you can become very frustrated. At the end of the week, you really did not accomplish anything. So as we begin to close out this year, to take on this philosophy of completion, this ability now to start a task at the beginning, see it through, and then get it done. And we were saying the steps to that, one of the critical things to preparing yourself to get the desired results, that when you make your list of things to do, and we were, that's critical. If you don't make a list of things to do every day, whether you complete that list successfully or not, you at least have a process and a foundation to monitor your progress. If you don't make a list of things to do each day, at the end of the week, maybe you had 10 things to do each day, and it was one of those weeks and you, you just completely went off the rails, then at least at the end of the week, you have that list. There are 50 things here that you did not get done, and so now you can take corrective action. If you do not operate from a, a list, chances are, it's very difficult to be successful. Nothing is impossible. But when you don't operate from a list, you literally undermine your own possibilities for success. So as we begin to plan our days, number one, we always say when you lay out your plan for the next day, schedule when that activity must be performed. But to do proper and to complete yourself with respect to those activities is not enough to just schedule it but to schedule and allow enough time for preparation and enough time for execution. So two hours of preparation, an hour and a half of execution, that's three and a half hours. And you must always allow transfer time. The time, never plan your schedule so tightly that when things happen, you get thrown off. So with that, so that three and a half hours now, you may allow a block of four hours or maybe even four and a half hours to make transitions into and out of that project. But the thought is this, when you operate with a philosophy of completion, then that means that you persist in the execution of that particular project until it is done. That requires a couple of things. You must have expectations for the outcomes that you desire. So if you have a business meeting with someone about a particular opportunity, then before you go to that meeting, proper preparation says you should have what, what are you going to say and do in that meeting? You should have a listing of the things you want to, the outcomes you desire. 
and some thoughts about the strategy. Sometimes when you have meetings and important events in your life, it's important to visualize the entire thing in your mind. To make a list of all the alternative solutions. You know, as a salesperson, when you begin what's called the closing sequence, where you are creating the desired outcome. When you start that closing sequence, you have an understanding of what the objections are. What are those things that can arise in the sequence that can block you? Person says, well, I love what you're doing, but I don't have time. That's an objection. Have an answer for that. I love what this whole program, but I don't have the money to get involved. Having a way to handle that objection. And so the idea of completion requires, number one, that you operate from a list. Two, that you consider each activity as a project. A project that has a beginning, an ending, a process, and a desired outcome. And a commitment, a mindset of completion. I had a friend, Russell Hemphill. Russell worked with us many years. And the one thing about Russell, whatever task you sent Russell to do, he was not going to come back empty hand. Maybe you sent him to go out and, 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 and bring back food and everything was closed. You know, the grocery store, Russell's going to find a 7-Eleven somewhere and get something. And so in success and creating success in our lives, we must have that philosophy and that mindset of completion that I will always get a desired outcome, that I will never come back empty-handed. When we can use these principles of completion and couple that with persistence, and also that mindset that as you're doing the things you set out to do, there will always be obstacles. The moment you start progressing, there's always a resistance against whatever you're doing. You decide that you want to create a, a business. There are going to be people telling you it's impossible. Mm -hmm. There are going to be obstacles of financing. And whatever the obstacles are that appear in your journey in blocking your project, consider them opportunities. Every obstacle is an opportunity for growth. So the more obstacles you have, the interesting thing is you get closer to your goals the obstacles appear bigger and bigger. It seems like those obstacles, those, those things that say you can't do it, there's no way, stop. You can't be successful. You can't achieve those things that you want to achieve. But in your mindset, look at those obstacles as signals for success. That the bigger the obstacle, you know that the opposition, the weeds are throwing their last blow that they're getting ready to collapse, they're going to fall down, that you now, all you have to do is persist in the activity that you're doing and you will win. So today, if we say, where did the message come from? There are a number of different chapters in the book where this message came from. There's that, that, that first law of thought that how you approach completion as a mindset. There's that second law of change that many times you have to change your thinking to accommodate your reality. Now, when I say to accommodate your reality, the reality of your operation, not necessarily the reality of your environment. Many times the reality of your environment will undermine your efforts toward the reality of your potential. So what thoughts do you have to change to get the desired result. The law of vision is critical. Visualize the result that you want every time. That everything that you do, if you look at it as a project and you take just a moment and visualize the results that you desire, you'll find that your ability to create success, to create abundance, to create the things that you want is enhanced. You see, the more you can visualize it, that means the more energy, the more vibration you can put into it. And under the, we often talk of the law of uh, special relativity, E, energy, vibration, equals M, mass, manifestation, times the speed of light squared. And spiritually, this means that your level of desire 
And desire is a measure of your vibration. When you really want something badly, you're vibrating on a higher level. So your level of desire makes you magnetic to attract into your space the, re the results that you're seeking. And so that law of vision is, is critical. The law of command. As you go along your day, as you undertake your project, you always affirm it is done. It is done. I win. It is done. Complete. It is done. Whatever it is that you are seeking, it is done. And we continue down the laws. One of the things that I've learned about this book is I've lived my life by it. And I've learned from other people. We're doing a whole series of interviews of people who've used the book to transform their lives. And one of the things we're learning is that the idea of mastery is that you can take each one of the particular laws and understand how to apply them very effortlessly so that you can automatically approach any task, any project with the proper mindset, the proper vision, the proper affirmations, the proper focus, the proper level of energy and activity with the right team, but they understood the values of the time necessary and hang in there and it will be done. So work on completion, folks. You have the ability to complete whatever you desire, bring it about and create the life of your dreams so that you can be what you want to be, do what you want to do and have whatever you want to have, always knowing that the best is yet to come.